Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and praise the Lord. What a great opportunity that the Lord has given us. We want to bless the Lord and give Him the glory. Launch 2020 conference continues, and uh, tonight we are going to have a very interesting conversation. Uh, as always, it has been a blessing to many of us. We want to uh, thank God for the far we have come, and uh, tonight we are going to look at pastors and politicians. In this conversation, we are basically looking at what is the relationship between the church and the political leaders. Because oftentimes, we find ourselves in the mix. And in this particular mix, we do not seem to understand where there is a boundary. We cross the boundary into politics, and the politician crosses the boundary into church. We have had situations where the politicians have literally uh, taken over the church services on Sunday morning. We come to church to worship God, and then all of a sudden, the politician walks in, disrupts everything, and takes over the service. And so the question is, what is going on here? I thought we came to church to worship God, but then a politician, because of his political status and influence, he walks into the service and controls everything, and at, to a certain extent in some places, where you even see that the, the, the people are fighting in churches. We have had situations where people have been killed, shed blood in church because of political differences. Now, as spiritual leaders and as ministers of the gospel, as the body of Christ, where do we draw a line? Because there has to be a clear distinction between the church and politics, between the spiritual and government. And now, to help us put this into perspective, we have a great panel that is going to interrogate this matter and bring it to our understanding. I can assure you that you will be blessed, you will be challenged, because the kind of panel uh, members that we have tonight are men with the credentials, not just credentials, but experience as well. And now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you our panel tonight, and this is a very great and powerful team. On my left is an apostle of Jesus Christ. Let the audience be able to hear what you have to say. I am Peter Akik. I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm the leader of Pioneer Apostolic Ministries, and uh, I'm based here in Nairobi. And I'm looking forward to the uh, pieces of conversation that we are going to have on this platform today concerning the pastors and the politicians and what is the perfect will of God in this matter and how we need to go forward beginning here. Wow. So thank you so much for the time. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Apostle, and you're most welcome. On my right is a man, I, I feel so humbled to be seated next to him. Uh, why? Because this man is uh, not uh, a newcomer to our screens. He's uh, been there several times. Many of us know him. He is an elder in the city of Nairobi and across the country. He is a very senior leader. As usual, Bishop, Arthur, yes, sir. it's yes, sir. always a great joy to sit in a panel together with you. Thank you, sir. And especially having me in this program. Yes, sir. And I want to assure all the viewers that it's going to be great. Yes. It's going to be powerful and it's going to be explosive. So you better not touch that dial. Stay put expecting to hear what we shall bring across so that you can be helped and understand the difference between politics and the church, and much more so. Is there a demarcation between politicians, the clergy, and the laity? Yes, sir. Yeah. Wow. I'm looking forward Thank you. to the conversation. God bless you. Thank you so much, Bishop. It's a great joy to have you. And on my extreme right is a friend, a minister of the gospel. He is a great vessel that God has uh, equipped in our generation a man that is uh, passionate about souls. He wins souls everywhere. He goes left, right, center, all over the world. And I'm so privileged to have you. People want to hear your voice. Kindly introduce yourself in a moment. Thank you, Bishop. It's a pleasure having this conversation today. And even having the honor to be sandwiched among my seniors and learning the process at the same time we dissect this topic. Yes. It's a pleasure having you. I look forward for the conversation. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now, to get us started into this conversation, I want to read a scripture. And then this being men of God, they know the Bible. They will unpack it for us and dissect it for our understanding. And I believe that we will be blessed. 
I want to look at the scripture in 1 Timothy chapter number 2, verse number 1, 2, and 3. 1 Timothy 2, 1, 2, and 3. Therefore, I exhort first of all, that's applications, prayers, intercessions, and giving thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Apostle Peter, okay, the Apostle Paul exhorts the church, he exhorts Timothy, and he says to Timothy that prayers, intercession, and supplications be done for people who are in authority, for kings, for kings, for rulers, for those in authority. I want to begin with you by asking, is there a relationship between our praying for those who are aspiring into office? They are not yet kings, but they come for us to pray. Is there a relationship between that and? And, and, and us. Because we are the ones who pray, and these are aspiring into kingship. There is. Okay. And uh, thank you for the time. Yes, Allow sir. me to begin by saying that the church needs to be at the center of human development. Yes, sir. Every aspect of government of man should be, in a sense, expressing a dimension of the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. In other words, those who are going into politics should basically be products of the church. Yes. And the church is a product of its leadership. Yes. And that leadership is a product of its relationship with God. Yes. Now, when people come to the church for prayer, mm -hmm. uh, let me draw a line. Yes. Is it because of their aspirations in politics mm -hmm. that they have felt and seen the need to consult with the church? Or is it that these are people who have a relationship with the God of this church mm -hmm. and have discerned the need of serving God in the governance and representation of people mm -hmm. in political matters? Okay. So that they are consulting their spiritual leaders for prayer. Now, those two are very different. Yes, sir. Because one, the first one, will be abuse to the church. Yes. Because the church is being used in their time of need. Mm -hmm. The other one is procedure. Yes. Because when the church is at the center of human development, like Ephesians 4, 15 says, growing up in all dimensions into Christ, yes. all aspects of life. Yes. And politics, which involves governance of men mm -hmm. and representation of men, yes. should be influenced by the government of God. Yes. Because even the topic pastors and politicians should be pastors over politicians. Okay. Pastors over politicians. That's right. Yeah. In other words, the pastor is superior to the politician. Absolutely, because the kingdom of God is bigger and politics is a world in the big world. Yes, sir. Which God rules over. <laughs> I like that. And, and I like so, that. And so, if someone is aspiring to go into politics, yes. he's not desired a bad thing. Yes. But how it is approached is what brings abuse yes. and brings ridicule and actually... Um, puts God on the shelf to be consulted in time of personal achievement. Mm. From where you sit, Apostle, what do you see in our context today? Do you see the first ex explanation you gave, which leads to abuse, or you see the second explanation you, you gave, which leads us to procedure? By large, we are, sadly speaking, yes, dealing sir. with the first context. Exactly. And it is interesting in this manner. Okay. That most of these people bear Christian names and belong to some church somewhere. That's the problem. However, mm. they do not have an ongoing relationship with church. Yes. And if they do, they do not have with God. Yes. And when they are coming to seek political office, mm -hmm. it is more or less trying to um, twist God to bless their way. Mm. And to me, that is an abuse. Wow. Well said. Well said. Bishop, you interact with the high and the mighty of this country, Kenya. Not once, not twice. You, you, they even call you. And you being a senior and a father, 
kindly help us get the right perspective because we are in a state where we feel, or rather, according to Apostle Peter, the church has been used for convenience purposes. People who have no relationship with God come for us to endorse with prayer in Jesus' name and send them into politics. Are we not being abused? And from where you sit, what is your understanding of this? Thank you very much, Bishop Wanjala. You know, I love what Apostle Peter has said. Yes, sir. And I think it's important for us to have it in perspective. Exactly. Who created these politicians? God. God, mm -hmm. who owns everything yes. and is the father of, of all. all. Exactly. That's what the Bible says. Yes, sir. Number two, he has made it very clear. Mm. A number of these politicians are members of our churches. Yes. They are parishioners somewhere. Okay. They sit in, in a, a congregation church. somewhere on a Sunday mm -hmm. or on a Saturday. Uh huh. All right? Yes, sir. So that means then they have pastors who are shepherds. Yes. That shepherd them. Mm. That means that uh, one can be in politics. Yes. But you not forget yes. that number one, he is a member of a congregation somewhere, yes. of a parish somewhere, mm -hmm. of a church somewhere, uh -huh. and he has a pastor over him. Okay. Now, when it comes to vying, like you have said, yes. uh, for a political seat, yes. I think it should be very clear, mm -hmm. and this thing is in Africa. Yes. By the way, mm -hmm. our people in Africa have not understood mm -hmm. the difference between being a politician, which is largely leadership. Yes. When we talk about politics, actually we are talking about governance. Yes. We are talking about leadership. Yes. Taking care of the affairs of men mm -hmm. within a given jurisdiction. Yes, sir. So that's what politics, just like a medic person, mm. has been given an assignment mm -hmm. of taking care mm -hmm. of the health affairs of the subjects of a given constituency yes, sir. or given uh, nation. Mm -hmm. Same thing mm -hmm. with politicians. So, but you see the narrative mm. that we hear of mm. and uh, the way our people view mm. politicians is totally different. Yes. So there has to be an autocorrect uh -huh. of this narrative. Mm -hmm. And I would say this just to come to the question. Okay. That politicians are simply leaders. Yes. They're leaders. They are entrusted with governance affairs. Yes, sir. Uh, in a constituency mm -hmm. in the nation. Mm -hmm. Now, when they come to the church, mm -hmm. they come to worship. Mm -hmm. They come for this one thing, okay. to worship if they're genuine, okay. right? But not to use the gathering or the convocation of believers to have their need of searching for votes. Mm. Because they find churches to be uh, vote A banks. Very, yes, yes, vote yes. banks. Yes. That's where they'll get actually the crowd. Mm. That's where they'll get women, men, the youth to vote for them. And mm. you know, they come with goodies. Many yes. times. Yes. So that they can actually, uh, they can bribe the congregation in the presence and the watch of us pastors and bishops. So there has to be an autocorrect. Okay. There has to be the change of the mindset. Yes, sir. That one, politicians, okay, are leaders. Mm -hmm. They are appointed by God. Mm -hmm. We don't dispute that. We don't dispute but that. But they should know their place when yes. they come to church. Yes. They come to worship. It's a holy place and they've got to revere God that, is a, that has created them and that gave them the grace to be in leadership. Now, Bishop, when you see a situation where the politician comes to church and takes over the service, and uh, they, 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 they actually did not come to worship, they came to address. And that's why even when they walk in, the whole service is disrupted. Yes. Who is to blame? It's a pastor. How can a politician walk into a sanctuary here just only to discover that he has taken the mic, inviting his colleagues or the team that he has come with, and within 30 minutes, yes. they have actually desecrated the altar uh -huh. with whatever they say, yes. and at the end of the day, people are just there watching and wondering mm. what next. Who gave them that authority? It is the pastor. The pastor is the one that gave them that authority. That's number one. Yes. So the pastor is to blame. Okay. And I want to say this loud and clear yes, to all the viewers, especially men of God. Mm. Can we know our place and mm. our responsibility? We have a responsibility over those leaders. Mm. We have a responsibility over the politicians that visit our churches. For me, they come to worship. Mm. And if they come with any other motive, they actually come to bribe. Yes. Number two. Okay. Also, politicians need to be 
uh, they need to be helped uh -huh. to know that when they come to church on a Sunday, on a Saturday, whichever day, they come to worship. Yes. The primary reason of their coming to church should Just be to worship. to worship. That's right. And therefore, if they come to worship, let them worship like other members. Mm -hmm. And pastors should not treat them so, um, uh, so special yes. than the engineers, uh -huh. the doctors, the pilots uh -huh. that are seated in that church. Because I'll tell you something. Yes. We can be talking of... Uh, they have come because they have brought money. Yes. But you have forgotten. Yes. You have members in your congregation who we'll give, we'll you... give more yes. than those politicians exactly. who come with 20,000 uh -huh. to bribe the members of the church uh -huh. to vote them. That is the version of the highest order. I would... There should be a line. There should be a clear line. A clear line. And uh, now, I think the best way to, to, to give such a lesson is when a politician comes into church and we deny them the right to address people. Is that going they to, don't be too have to address people from the altar? The Bible says, "Give honor to whomsoever honor is due." But it doesn't mean you invite them to the altar. You can say, "Ladies and gentlemen, we are blessed to have mm. with us, mm. right?" Yes. Bra bra bra. You yes. can state yes, the name. person, yes. their names, etc. And then, if they want to address the crowd outside the sanctuary, outside, let the microphones, let everything else be put outside. You know, let me say this: in the days of uh, at the late uh, President Moy. Yes. There's something that I loved him for. Yes. And in fact, we miss, we miss, we miss him. President Moy. Yes, sir. Do you know, at no one time did the president of that time, President Moy, yes. stand on the altar. Yes. The altar. Mm, he never. With the microphone to talk like politicians talk these mm, days. He never. If he wanted to address a nation, he always did it outside the sanctuary. Wow. But not at the altar. The altar is a holy place. Yes. It's a place of spiritual exchange. Mm. It's, it must be respected. It mm. must be honored. Mm. It must be revered. And I'm sorry. Mm. One of these days, things might happen to some of the politicians who come with their big mouths and stand on the altar only to discover there is a God in heaven. Oh God. So there has to be the fear oh. of God. And I want to say to all the politicians, yes. without any fear and without winking, yes. that it's time you revered God whenever you go to the places of worship. Wow. Bishop, thank you so much. I think that's powerful. Yeah. Reverend Evans Kocho. Yes, yes. These politicians, when they come, they have goodies. And apparently, the pastor seems to be waiting for some goodies to arrive. So when the goodies arrive with the politician, he easily goes into the politician's pocket. From where you sit, what is your understanding of this? There's been this assumption or a notion uh -huh. that uh, God is poor and politicians are rich. <laughs> and I think this came from the pit of hell. Yes. Yeah. And uh, from what the apostle of God said, yes. we must start from the foundation. God laid the church on top of every other ring. Exactly. So the church, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the politics and politicians are subject to the church. Yes. And we understand, even from the Sunday school, yes. that all riches belong to God. Yes. So there is this assumption that when these people come in, then they are richer than our God. Uh -huh. I think there have been a disconnect between our image or identity yes. with our Father. Yes. So that when these people come in, some people begin to think that they have what we don't have. Mm. So it is very wrong. And I think uh, uh, what Bishop has said, these people sometimes they just come to bribe the people. Yeah. They want to bribe the church. Remember, there are some of them are just part-time members. Mm -hmm. They are members when they want to get to the office, and after that, they are never members. Actually, that is the position. Yeah. You would only see these politicians in churches when it is an electioneering period. Yeah, yeah. After they are elected, they will come back when they want... Uh, uh, to vie again. Yeah. So are they genuine in the first place? They are not genuine because they only want to bribe. Uh, I think they think it, they want to bribe God. Yes. To push them into office. Uh huh. While after being pushed into office, they will not honor that God. Yes. They will do their things. Okay. Some of them are very loyal members when they need to be in the office. Yes. And they come to church and mm -hmm. they want to be involved in the church matters. Yes. But after this time, you will never see them again. Uh -huh. Maybe you will see them in the next election. Uh -huh. So it, it, there must be a, a shift uh -huh. to make these people understand. Mm -hmm. Th these are our sons, these are our brothers, yes. these are our daughters. Yes. 
we make them understand that when they come to church, mm -hmm. they are coming to a higher authority, uh -huh. where everybody subjects himself to the higher authority. Wow. And the authority is God. Yes. And when they come to church, they must be very genuine that they are coming to worship. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much, Reverend. Yeah. Now, Apostle Okay, what is the role of a pastor in uh, developing this kind of uh, leaders? Because the, the, from your very introductory remarks, you, you have made it very clear that God is the origin of all this. Leadership is coming from God. These people are God's creation. But then when they rise into office, what is my duty as a pastor to the, to the, to the political leaders? Allow me to put this in the Kenyan context. Okay. Because we are dealing with a runaway situation which we are trying to catch up with. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Somewhere we the church slept. Yes. And politics was begging and beckoning. And okay. somebody jumped into politics without church preparation. Now we are trying to bring God's morals and sense into somebody who began without us. Yeah. And they did it, they made now, it without us. Yes. So, so we, we, we are in a, in a tight situation here. But, but, so let me address the situation we are dealing with and then come to the pattern. Okay. The situation we are dealing with is that uh, in a nation like Kenya where over 85% is perceived to be religiously Christian, yet, yet, yet the people in the church listen to the politician more than they listen to their pastor. <laughs> okay. It therefore puts the church leadership in a very precarious condition yes. and situation. Yes. Because the people who sit and... and Bishop, thank you so much for the way you brought it forth. Yes. When the politician attends our service and you fail to give him a chance, you will see a mutiny in the church. Yes. These people, are they listening to you or they are listening to the politician? All this time, they are waiting to see the politician. In fact, on that particular day, the attendance of the church will be three times, ten times. Yes. After the service, Bishop, with all respect, allow me to add on to what you right. said. The addressing of the people outside would not even be allowed. Why? Politics has got followers. Yes. They are sellers and they are buyers. These people are marketing policies, positions, uh -huh. ideas. Uh -huh. The people will buy, they will not buy it. Yes. Now, when a politician of a certain school of ideology uh -huh. attends service yes. and is addressing people outside, do I tell the members, the ones who don't love him, go home, the ones who love him, stay, or what? Because I'm bringing a division already uh -huh. in my congregation. Okay. Now, that is why I would like to add with all respect on what my senior said, that even the addressing of the people should be on their platform, not, on their meeting. Not on, on the their church platform. Not on the church platform. Okay. Yes. Because these people left home coming to hear the word of God. Yes. To give them direction, to connect them to God who created them. Wow. The politicians came for the same purpose. Yes. When we are done, we are gone. Mm. If you want to address them, put up your meeting. Uh -huh. Call a political rally. We will come. And they will come. Now, coming back to the situation we are dealing with. Yes, sir. Politicians are supposed to be products of the church. Mm -hmm. The church needs to understand politics. Yes. Politics in Greek is politica, which mm. means city affairs. Yes, that's, that's right. That's city affairs. Can you imagine? The affairs that organize how people relate in a city, mm. how they decide that's right. Well, mm. How they decide to, 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 to treat people mm. and live and all that. Yes. It's city affairs. It's city affairs. Now, mm. church needs to understand politics. Yes. We, are, we have missed something on that because when we miss to understand that, then we lack understanding in bringing correction to them. Okay. When you tell a politician, stop being corrupt, it's the same thing like telling a church member, stop singing. What do you mean? Wow. <laughs> But because I understand sin, yes. so I can explain to the church member when I say stop sin, this is I the detail this. of what I mean. Yes. When you tell a politician, don't be corrupt, what do you mean? Yes. So because we must understand mm. the, the context in which he is. Yes, sir. Do you know, Bishop Obed, yes. Yes, sir. that on the day of Pentecost, mm. the people who gathered in Jerusalem mm. had the 120 glorifying God in, in their, their language. languages. Not in the church language. No. The church needs to develop a capacity 
in which it can glorify God in the languages of men. Okay. If this man speaks politics, the church needs to raise quality men who can glorify God in political language. Okay. Now, we've not been so strong on that. Uh -huh. The church has not had structures mm. to keep people in their fields of calling, yes. as Bishop put it. Yes. We, we have got this, this idea that when you're born again, come preach the gospel. Mm. When a politician walks into a congregation, he finds himself irrelevant. Uh -huh. He finds himself not put to use. Yes. Because he's told to join the choir, he's not a singer, he's a politician. Mm. He's told to become a deacon, he's not a deacon, he's a politician. Mm. He's told to become an usher, he's not an usher. So where do we put him? We've got no structures, we've got no understanding mm. of where to put these people yes. for kingdom advancement. Mm. So that when they are articulating policies and positions of government and representing people in governance, mm. they are doing it from a kingdom point of view. Yes, sir. We must begin with our structures. We mm. must begin with our understanding. Mm. We must begin to be bigger than their politics. Yes. When they come, we swallow them, redirect them, order them, <laughs> and send them forth into Beautiful. their I like what you say. Beautiful. I like what you yes. said, Apostle. When they come, we swallow them and redirect them. Yes. But unfortunately, they have swallowed us and redirecting us. And do you know why that is happening? Yes, sir. Because the politician in the Kenyan context has come to understand that the pastor needs him more than he needs the pastor. My goodness. Yeah, yeah. Because your members listen to him more than they listen to you. Yes, sir. So, my brother, you are a pseudo minister. Mm almost figurehead mm. you mm. you you have a position but you don't have control yes the politician is being listened to by your members mm. more than they listen to you mm. now that makes the politician think that he does not more. need you you need him the other thing that i might mention before i allow my brothers this is a, yes. a paneling thing there's something we need to get back and bishop mentioned it yes uh, reverend mentioned it as well yes we need to get back our place. Exactly. We need to get back our identity. Mm. We need to get back our role. Yes. We need to get back our responsibility. Yes. The politician doesn't have a good picture of us. Yes. Therefore, it makes it a little bit hard for him to listen to my rebuke. Mm. Was like I said in my opening remarks, mm. Mm. these politicians subscribe to a church somewhere. Yes. Why don't they listen to their pastor? They go to some church at the end of they the day. They do. Yes. They do. They walk up and they go to have their way with impunity, caring less. Mm. Why is it that the pastor cannot give, for example, a governor a phone call and say, uh, my brother, not governor, mm. my brother, mm. uh, governor Sonso, uh, is that you? Yes. May I see you in my office tomorrow? The pastor is calling the governor because the governor is a member of his church. May I see you in my office tomorrow? He's not going to the governor's office. He's calling to his office. Yes. And the governor says, okay, I have a meeting. Okay, let's make it in the afternoon. Mm. And then he comes. And says, the reason I called you is because of the things you said yesterday in the public gathering. That was wrong. Bishop. That was out of order. That's it. And you need to change that. That's yes. Because if you don't do that, then it's not acceptable in That's our it. eyes or in the eyes of God. We lost that authority. We must get it back. Now, Apostle, before I go... This authority must have been lost at some point. Yes. Mm. And it has a lot to do with what the politician did to us. More than what we did to them. I agree. I agree. What the politician did to us, and before I blame him, what we did to ourselves. <laughs> okay. Because, man of God, the church is where the throne of God is. Yes. The throne of God is not in a political office and it's not at state house. It's in the God church. God rules nations from the church. Amen. Now, with that in the background, then we understand where all authority is coming from. Yes. So, from that point of view, we need to understand where we did not get it right. Uh -huh. yeah. We must redeem ourselves. Yes, sir. Because 2 Corinthians 10, verse number 6 says, we can only punish disobedience when our own opinion is perfect. Yes. So we need to begin somewhere. Yeah. Then we will call them and they will shrink. Mm. Because we can stand before them and speak like Samuel. Mm. Who among you has I taken his cow or yes. goat yes. or land? What, 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 what do I have in me that belongs to you? What? So I have moral authority to rebuke you. Wow. We must get back our moral authority. We must get it back. Mm. You know, in the days of the late Anglican Bishop, uh, 
Muge, Kipsang yes. Muge, yes. who died in August 14, 1990. Now, that was a man who was going against the powers that be yes. during his day. Yes. And they had nothing against him. Mm. They could not say, are you talking like that? We will come for your church land. Mm. We will come for the cars you imported without paying duty. That's right. We will come for this. We will come for this. Well, right. You are not paying taxes. They, they had nothing against him. Yes. So he had all moral authority to stand and, speak. and confront. Yes. I'm not saying we must always be confrontational. No. And I'm not in any way regarding less what the current church leaders are doing. Yes. What I'm trying to say is we've gone to bed with politicians. Wow. And that's a marriage I don't like. We need to wake up to the reality of matters and put politics into perspective. Yes. Politicians are doing a good thing. Mm. Politics is not a dirty game. Yes. Dirty players got into the game. Yes. <laughs> okay. I hear you. Now, who is going to clean the players before they step into the game so we have a good game played by good people for the good of all? Without corruption, without tribalism, nepotism, without greed. Mm. Oh, God, have my son as mm. greed. Mm. With, without all these things, the player must be cleaned. And that's the place of the church. The church comes in. We are called the moral conscience of the society. Yes, sir. Right. That's our place. Yes, sir. To call the people of the world to order. To order. Show them the light. Then they go and shine the light. Praise the Lord. That's our place. Wow. Thank you, sir. I'm coming back. Bishop. <laughs> I love this. I love bishop. this. I love this bishop. <laughs> now, oh, yeah, yeah. we lost the moral authority yeah. when we went to bed. When we went to bed with, with the politician. politician. Yeah. And the politician has romanced us into sleep, right? Now, we can't even speak, right? Because whatever we have, was given to us by the politician, right? When we look at any project in church, we need a politician to buy anything in church. How are we supposed to function as a church so that we delink and break this chain from which the politician has bound us to an extent that we can't address them? I, I think uh, Apostle Peter has addressed it very well. Thank you so much, Apostle Peter. You... You have set me on fire, man. Yes. The truth of the matter is, yes. we've got to go back yes. to where we lost it. Mm -hmm. And he has used the words, regain our authority. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastical authority. authority. Yes. Just like in the Old Testament. Yes, sir. Whenever a king messed up, mm. a prophet will show up. Yes. And will speak, thus saith the Lord. Yes. Next year at this time, or next week at this time, all right, this and this will happen. Where has that gone mm. in our case, in mm. our context? Yes, sir. And I think that's what the man of God is saying. Yes, sir. Let me say this. We are raising up a breed of politicians, mm. unfortunately, mm. that have not been helped mm. in our churches. Yes. Look at the kind of uh, discipleship that we do. Uh -huh. Show me a discipleship material or a curriculum that is skewed towards mm. raising up the kind of leaders that would want to see yes. that my brother is talking about, yes. we don't have. Mm. We have to be deliberate mm. and be intentional mm. to go back to where we lost it, yes. where actually we slept with those politicians, mm. as he has put it, mm. and do what we call the autocorrect. Yes. And make sure that we begin to speak to our brethren yes, sir. who have a passion, mm. who have the calling mm. to get into politics. Mm. And he has put it very right, and I agree with him. Yes, sir. Politics is all about governance. Yes. It's a leadership. And he has brought it very well what politics means. Mm. All right? City affairs. Mm. Let me go a step further and say national affairs. Yes. Constituency affairs. affairs. Yes. All right? He's a leader who takes care of the subjects of a constituency, a sub the subjects, these are people mm. of a cosmopolitan mm. or of a nation. Yes, sir. So, to me, there is nothing wrong with politics. Mm. That should be very clear if there is a brother or a sister who feels a burden and a passion to vie for a political seat. Mm. If that passion is in you, we encourage you to do so. Mm. But you know what, Bishop? Yes, sir. I feel servants of God, mm. and we have been having a conversation yeah. uh, lately, especially when we began to talk about the post-COVID uh, you know, strategies of uh, getting the church back to its feet, etc. Mm. Mm. We've been talking about governance, 
Uh, you have seen me appear yes. in so many press releases and yes. just, just, just speaking on behalf yes. of the church. Mm. A few of us have come together mm. and we have said, this cannot continue. Yes, sir. So we are identifying brethren mm. from our congregations, mm. from our ministries mm. that have the call for leadership, for politics in this country. Mm. And we begin to hold them accountable mm. by taking them through a discipleship kind of a program yes. so that we prepare them mm. when they go to Senate, when they go to Parliament, mm. all right? When they go to the county assemblies, mm -hmm. how are they supposed to behave? The yes. truth is they go there to be a representation of the kingdom of God, like our brother said, yes. at the same time to be the extension of God's will yes. in that parliament. Mm. So if we don't prepare them as church leaders, mm. then we are going to have a class. Yes. And the kind of uh, uh, politicians that we see mm. in the county assemblies and, and, and in parliament, etc. So this kind of disgrace mm. must stop. Yes. But it begins with us as church leaders by intentionally and deliberately coming up mm. with a curriculum or a discipleship content mm. where we can actually sit with our brothers mm. and sisters. These are members of our churches mm. and uh, have skilled men who can actually take them through mm. yes. uh, discipleship process mm. so that by the time the time this brother is voted uh into parliament uh into senate or into the county assembly yes they have been prepared enough mm. and even possible sign mm. somewhere mm. uh you know uh that i would be accountable etc mm. etc et 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 responsible exactly oh. otherwise we continue recycling the same leaders recycling the same leaders and i'm sorry to say kenyans unfortunately that's a culture that we have of recycling leaders who have done us no good and God has to help us to get back to correct the mess. Bishop, it has been said, and it's a popular saying, that the people elect the leaders they deserve, not the leaders they want. Mm. Now, if you look at that statement, it, it feels like in as much as we may try, it is a true reflection of who we are. Right. So, I think there is also a work to be done on us. Because, in my view, when we look at the people in our congregation, somebody is a member of the church, they want to go into a, a political office. But before they, went, they, they go into political office, they are resigning from some place. Even where they are coming from, I think we take too long to begin to realize that these people need to be equipped with the knowledge of Jesus Christ and with the gospel of the kingdom of God. Because we try to change the outside. We've had a conversation here on the new birth yesterday right. that was looking at the person's interior. We were saying that uh, there is a need to first of all begin from the interior before we go to the exterior. Right. Now, we, we try as much as we can all the time trying to blame people and uh, we are dealing with the leaves, but the nature of the heart is wrong. What do you have to say about our way of presenting the message of the kingdom? Because that is the introduction. That is the introduction. People can walk into church, but walking into church doesn't mean somebody's born again. So we assume that because they're in church, they are believers. Mm. Only to manifest the true nature when they get into power. And power corrupts people. Right. And no, so now, when the nature of a person is not corrected from inside, they can only manifest the same nature when they go outside. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's why I said we've got to be deliberate yes. and be intentional. Yes. We have to ask God to help us to okay. uh, discern... Mm -hmm what we need to actually tell these leaders in the waiting yes those that want to vie for political seats you are the bishop of this church yes. for example yes fountain of joy yes center yes apart from the message that you preach on a sunday um i'm talking about the message of the cross i'm talking about righteousness i'm mm. talking about do you have a curriculum mm. a discipleship content yes which is actually skewed towards not only the politicians but the leaders the in leaders general yes that are at the marketplace yes. you have uh, classes where you can say i am going to have this kind of a forum mm. where i'm going to raise up impactful leaders yes transformational leaders yes you may not have the grace to teach them on certain aspects but 
you know of someone who can do that who can do that yes. and you become intentional yes because it has to begin with all of us yes ministers of the gospel mm -hmm. right. ensuring that apart from the revival services that we have yes every in, in fact some of the revival services Shh. we have are not even revival services uh -huh. they are for something else yes uh, it's all about. I thank God you withheld that other thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> sir. yeah. So we, we we need to come up with different programs. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, talk to me yeah. about business empowerment forums. Yes. Where we empower members of our churches. Yes. On how to make money. Yes. At the marketplace. Yes. How to create channels for wealth transfer. Yes. Do we have forums like that? No, we have forums where we want to release a financial miracle. But how do you release a financial miracle? Yes, the Bible says, and the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the just. Yes. But where is the channel? Yes. So we need to show our members Come how on. to create channels for the wealth transfer. Yes. And that itself is a content yes. that has to be taught. Yes. And that's why talk shows like this, yes. Bishop, are very important. Very important. Like the ones that we have had with you. Wow. On yes. how to invest for. Yes. Uh, to, to save for investment. Yes. That's a content. Yes. Now, when it comes to politics, uh -huh. then we come up with a theme mm. that is intentionally designed yes, sir. to taking the leaders in our churches mm. through mm. so that by the time mm. they are ready to go into politics, mm -hmm. their character has already been formed. Wow. So that when they go out there, anything to do with corruption has nothing or it cannot come near them because their pastor yes. mm. has invested into them. Mm. They have been discipled. Mm. Now, when you got saved, you yes. went through a discipleship class. Yes, yes. All right? Mm -hmm. And you were, now that you're born again. Yeah. One, two, three. Yes. Be prayerful. Read your Bible yeah. every day. Bro. Yeah. You know the things that yes. you are taking yes. through. Yes. And that's what has made you to stand exactly. up to today as a man of God. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. What about politics and governance? I think there is a problem with our content development for the church. And yet we have yeah. actually resourceful persons yes. that can sit and work on the content. We have resource persons who can even actually take uh, our brethren through mm. the training. By the time they get an office, we are not, on, not only talking about politics now, but we are talking about leadership at all levels. Yes, sir. Imagine he is a brother who has been given a job as a, a CJ, mm. all right? Mm. Chief Justice. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. He is a brother who has been given a job as a PS. Yes. All right? He is a brother who has been uh, nominated as a cabinet secretary. Yes. He is a sister who has been nominated to serve at a very Parastatal high exactly. level. Yes. If this brother, this sister, has gone through a discipleship training program, yes, and the pastor has given him or her a charge, mm. now that you have gone through this program, I charge you. Yes. All right? Yes. It becomes so easy then mm. what Apostle Peter said to be realized, mm. where now you can pick a call. Yeah. And call that sister, right. call yes. that brother. Oh, God. But how are you going to call that brother when you never invested in him? Yeah. Wow, we've been overtaken. It's a, it's a big question. We, we are, like he said, we have been overtaken. <laughs> we we yeah. are chasing what but we can redeem. Oh, amen. Yeah. yeah. Amen. He mentioned the word redemption. Yes, yes. yes. I think we can redeem our moral authority yes. by intentionally and deliberately, mm -hmm. all right, developing curriculums or discipleship content which actually can raise up a generation that we are raising up so that they don't become like the now generation of politicians. Bishop, I want you to speak to me as a, as a young pastor uh, who is trying to raise a church. And uh, I am struggling with bills and financial issues. This is, this is real. We don't want to ask you ground, it is different. Yeah. Yeah. Kitu kama yes. Wanasema kwa ground, vitu ni different. Ni different. Sasa, no. mambo ni tofauti. Mambo ni different. Sasa, Bishop, kwa ground, here is a young pastor with a small congregation trying to make it grow. But in their struggle to make it grow, they are broke, they are doing the best they can, they have no members, and even the little infrastructural development that they need to do, they are not capable of doing. I, I don't want to be nice right now. Yes. I want to be a little bit hard. Yes. Did they hear from the Lord? Okay. Bishop, talk about that. And are they, they hear doing, from God? are they doing what God called them to do? Yes. Or because they saw Bishop open Wanjala with a church, mm -hmm. with nice equipment and drives a nice car, mm. they also think that they can have that overnight. Uh -huh. You see, this is what I believe in. Yes. Our blessings are at the place of our calling. Amen. 
I believe from deep within my heart, yes. wherever there is a vision, there is provision. Yes. And unless you are not sure that uh -huh. you are called, uh -huh. you are trying to find your way. Mm. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that you cannot go through uh, uh, character development, you cannot go through a process uh, of being tried, etc. Yeah. But surely, if God has called you to a place, yes. and he has given you that ministry, he mm. will provide for the vision. Amen. And this element of uh, looking down upon the five, the ten members yes. that God has brought into that congregation yes. must stop. Uh -huh. I can tell you, those five, ten members have got more resources, they have more money than these politicians who come thinking that they have it all, only to discover mm -hmm. on the day of the fundraising, they will bring you 10,000 when an engineer in the church will bring you 50,000. Yes. It's a mindset. Wow. And Thank the you. culture must change. Wow. Thank you, Bishop. Reverend Kocho, yes, yes. you began by saying uh, there is a mindset that thinks that God is poor and so is the church. As a matter of fact, when people want to abuse you in your poverty, they say you are as, as poor as a church mouse. Yeah. Wherever it came from. <laughs> Wherever this came from, I don't know. But then, a, a man of God, yes, yes. is the church mouse poor? <laughs> Is it even staying in the church? <laughs> Let me start from this. If there is a problem at the labor ward or with the midwives, <laughs> there will be a problem with the products that come out of that labor ward. Wow. As uh, the apostle said uh, sometimes late, uh, earlier. Yes. I don't see a problem with the politicians and politics. Mm. The problem is at the labor world. Mm. Because the church is the birthplace okay. of these leaders. Okay. The what church is where these people are manufactured. Mm. If there is a problem there, then we cannot blame the product. Uh -huh. Now, we have to go back to where things started. Yes. Now, when we allowed the politicians to romance us to their bedrooms, mm. a few things happened. Uh -huh. Number one, we allowed the church to be politicized. Yes. And when the church is politicized, it means morality is also politicized. Uh -huh. And when morality is politicized, it means at the end of the day, we are going to have an immoral culture, mm. immoral society. Mm. So we cannot begin by correcting the mess there. Mm. We have to begin by correcting the mess at the birthplace. Mm. Now, I look at Daniel mm. in Babylon, mm. and I look how Nebuchadnezzar wanted to lure them into his system. Yes. By first of all, trying to change their identity, by changing their names, mm. changing their diet, mm. trying to give them another purpose. Yes. But it is on record that Daniel stood his purpose. Amen. So as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must revisit our purpose. Mm. We must revisit our identity. Mm. And we must understand what we are consuming in our diet. Mm. Now, having said that, I don't know whether this might stay in the church. Mm. Because I know we serve a rich God. Amen. The moment we understand things from that place... Mm then we will know that our provision, our economic provision, are not with the politicians. Yes. You know you are a father. Yes. You give birth to a child. Yes. You cannot come up sometime, then be, begin to believe that your child is now richer than you. Mm. With all those V8s and everything that he has, he's mm. your child, and yes. all that are your wealth. Yes. By so, extension. Yes. Yes. So we need to understand that the church is the birthplace. Mm. And this is where we birth rich people. Mm. This is where we birth all these people because God is rich and yeah. God is giving birth to rich people. Mm. So that will kill this idea of the politicians having our provisions. Because nowadays I see uh, that some of us are even fighting over a dead body of a politician. Mm. Who is going to bury this politician? <laughs> because we mm -hmm. think that after, mm -hmm. after the burial... There's we a... are going to earn something. Okay. So we have to correct this. Oh, we God. understand our image, oh. our identity, mm. our purpose, mm. and our assignment. Wow. Yeah. The problem is at the birthplace. Yeah. Mm. And uh, the midwife 
is, is, is responsible for the safe delivery. Uh, let me add something uh, with uh, all respect, what Bishop and the Apostle said. Yes. I think we need to come up with uh, a well-established way or a foundation from where we disciple people. Mm. Yeah. Somebody said that if you visit me mm. and you are uh, blessing the Lord for bringing you and uh, for our family, yes. and my kid is busy checking your pocket, uh -huh. then the problem is not with my kid. Yes. The problem is with me. <laughs> because that is how I raise that child. To, to, to go so, check visitors' pockets. Yeah, so we must establish a foundation yes. from where we disciple these people mm. and come up with the good products that we can be proud of. Okay. And what the Apostle and the Bishop said, mm. we cannot correct these people if the misappropriation of funds are had in the church. Yes. We cannot tell them off about corruption issues yes. and misappropriation of the funds. Yes. So we must start with ourselves, mm -hmm. then give birth to right products. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, Bishop, allow yeah. me to, uh, in Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19, the Great Commission. Yes, sir. Jesus said, go mm. and teach all nations. Mm. Or in another version, go and preach mm. the gospel. Yes. All right? Yes. But there is the aspect of teaching them to observe. To observe. Correct. That teaching them to observe is not to make pastors. Mm hmm only no it is to teach the converts in all aspects of life yes in their different callings yes in their different professions yes and i think this issue what's coming out very clear is the element of discipleship need to be looked at uh-huh yeah and the content as well and the, the content. content yes right from sunday school yes now we are talking of a generation mm. that we are raising up we yes. are talking about our children we are talking about the young people that mm. we have. Mm. There is a way that I believe as servants of God must honestly uh, approach our discipleship content, what we are teaching, what we are teaching mm. in our churches, what we are preaching, and ensure that we have different curriculums mm. that are relevant to different professions. Wow. So to say. Yes. You know, there's something that I picked from uh, Apostle Peter mm. that uh, about the different uh, professionals that we have yes. in our churches. Yes. You expect them, instead of helping you to do what is supposed to be done in the church, for example, project management, mm. etc., mm. but you want to convert them to become musicians. You uh -huh. mentioned that. Uh -huh. That and you want to convert them to become musicians. Yeah. And they have not been called to become musicians. Yes. We have all these professionals mm. in our churches. Mm. We are politicians, we are professionals in our churches. What is this that we are passing on to them mm. so that they become the conscious of society mm. and they become ambassadors of Christ mm. at the marketplace? Mm. What is this that we don't give mm. that we must begin to address? Wow. I think that is coming heavy yes. in my spirit yes. that as servants of God, as mm. ministers, we need to have a genuine conversation Praise the Lord. about this. Wow. That's what's going to redeem mm. yes. the next generation mm. of That's leaders why. that we are raising. Us. Wow. Thank you, Bishop. Apostle Okay. Yes. I want you to give it uh, your final thought All right. in like three, four minutes. All right. Looking at that camera, if you have to address the audience, but if you need to talk to me, okay. please. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, there was a time in the days of President Kibaki that people were going to see the president. Mm -hmm. And I backed out of that team. And they said, why? And I said, because I don't have something to tell the president. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we are excellent in going to God, but we have not perfected our coming from God. Mm. Mm. Wow. Anytime we go to God, we go in weakness, we go in humility, we go as priests, we go to seek mercy, we go to, to hear from him. Yes, sir. But from him, we are coming to represent him. So there's going to and from. And, uh, coming from. Authority is not with the one going to God. Authority is the one coming from God. Ish. Because he's the one sent. Mm. And a sent one goes in the name of the sender. To represent the sender. To reveal right. the sender. 
to articulate the will of the sender. To live or die for the sender. Wow. In the Old Testament, the prophets went to kings and said, Thus says the Lord. Yes. Right. They came from somebody to speak his will. Mm. Why do we go to see the president today? Do we have a thus says the Lord? No. Now, we have a pending project. <laughs> we have a pending project. A senior man, a senior man like Naaman came to prophet Elijah. Yes, sir. He got the miracle mm. and he had come with a gift for mm. the man of God. Mm. The man of God looked at his watch. Yes. Looked at the gift and his watch mm. and said, no, nah, it's not time. You go back with it. Wow. Not that I don't have need. Sure. Bishop, in the interest of time, your parting shot would uh, give us uh, a father's voice and uh, will give guidance to many people yeah. who are looking to you for direction on this matter. I would want to encourage all believers, uh, wherever you are, by the grace of God, we began to have a conversation as the Kenyan clergy, largely drawn from the evangelical, Pentecostal, and charismatic churches. Yeah. Bishop, you know that. Yes. We felt it is time for us to unite. Mm. So there is a call to oneness mm. that we've been talking about through the Kenya Council of Church Alliances and Ministries. And by the grace of God, I chair that forum. Mm. One of the things that we have been discussing is it's time we brought down the Babylonian barrier. Mm. Mm. It's time we brought down the Babylonian barrier. What has divided us for a long time mm -hmm. has to be brought down yes. so that we can begin, like Apostle said, mm. Begin to speak with one voice. Yes. So that whenever there is an issue in a nation, mm. whenever there is a matter that we feel is affecting the church, we can all talk about it, discuss it, and speak with one voice, mm. not with many voices. Yes. And largely, by God's grace, we are actually making some progress mm. on that. Mm. And soon you will hear the strength of the church in this country. Wow. So there is hope. Mm. Let's not give up. Amen. As much as we have talked about the kind of politicians that we have in this country, I've come across a number of them. Mm. They are in the county governments. They are in the national government. Mm. Some of them are in Senate. Mm. These are brethren. Mm. Some of them are members of our churches. And we have been having this conversation mm. that it's time they became the salt wherever they are mm. and the light wherever they are. Mm. So some of us have begun having that conversation with the members of our congregations and it's my prayer that all our bishops, our apostles, and church ministers can actually begin to intentionally uh, disciple mm. uh, the leaders that God has given us in our congregations. Mm. And even for those who are vying for political seats, they can be helped and they will benefit hereafter. Mm. So it's a work in progress and we want to pray that God will bring us to that place of oneness mm. and we shall begin to speak with one voice. We have not lost it. Mm -hmm. There's a clarion call. Mm -hmm. God is speaking to us. Mm -hmm. And even through this program, yes. the voice of the Lord is so clear Amen. that it's time we redeemed our moral authority mm -hmm. and our spiritual authority as leaders in this country. The church is rising. Wow. God bless Amen. you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> wow. My brother, Reverend Kocho, yeah. kindly your parting shot as we come to the close of this program will be very helpful for us. Yeah. The Bible says that there is hope that even when a tree is cut down, it, it will sprout, sprout again. again. Yes. There is hope, the church of Jesus Christ, that we redeem our foundation, not just redeeming it, but standing on it mm. and speaking from there. Mm. And uh, as Bishop and the man of God have said, the church is going to rise big and big. Mm. And it is time that we stand there and speak from the biblical point of view. They have what they call their BBI, but we have our BBI, which is Back to Bible Initiative. Mm. Let's get back to the Bible okay. and explain the Bible. Thank you. God bless you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is the time we have to be able to bring you today's conversation. We wish we could do more, but uh, because of time, we will not be able to go beyond that. 
And we want to thank God for our panelists who have been very able in discussing this matter. And now we want to come to a close of tonight's program. We want to wish you well, the Lord's blessings upon you. Back to the Bible, back to the pattern, back to the foundation, so that we may go about in our ministry and our calling, doing what we do in word or deed as per the instructions of the scripture. And the Lord will help us. That is all we could do tonight. We wish you God's blessing. Shalom, peace, and life to you. Amen.